delicious melt in your mouth sponge toffee. Let's see what's cooking. Let's get the facts. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for. Hello everyone. First thing I'm going to show you is this candy bar. This was one of my favorite candy bars when I was a kid. It is called a Cadbury Crunchy and basically it is sponge toffee covered in chocolate. And I'm going to break it open just so I can show you here. There you can see the sponge toffee covered in chocolate. It's very crunchy, very crispy and the sponge toffee melts in your mouth when you eat it. But you can actually make this at home fairly easily. So start off with a large saucepan and two and a half cups of granulated sugar. Add to that two thirds of a cup of white corn syrup and one third of a cup of water. Now heat this over medium heat, stirring until the sugar dissolves. Heat this over medium high heat until it begins to boil. Once it starts to boil, you can stop stirring. You need to cook this until it reaches the hard crack candy stage, which is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The best way to determine this is to use a candy thermometer. If you don't have a candy thermometer, there are other ways of determining that temperature. So please see the link in the about section below for that information. While it's boiling, you can brush down the insides of the pot with a pastry brush dipped in cold water. Once you reach 300 degrees Fahrenheit, remove it from the heat and immediately add in four teaspoons of baking soda. And be careful when you're stirring it in because it will foam up quite violently. And that's why we use a very large pot because we don't want it to overflow. You'll see the color starting to turn a kind of a golden color. And then add in two teaspoons of vanilla and continue to stir until the vanilla is mixed in then you can stop stirring and now it's time to pour it into your 9 by 13 inch pan that's been lined with aluminum foil and the aluminum foil has been greased. So pour that in there and just let it be. Don't touch it, don't move it for about two hours until it's completely cooled and solid. And that cooking pot needs to go into a sink full of hot soapy water and it'll be a lot easier to clean up. There it is, after it's cooled, it's very easy to pull it out of the pan because we use the aluminum foil. And then you need to break it into pieces. I mean, I'm using the tip of a knife to kind of crack it, but I mean, you could use just your, finger, your hands to break it apart or the flat side of a meat mallet and then break it into bite-sized pieces. Now it's fine just the way it is, but you can also dip it in chocolate, which adds a nice flavor to it. You can either just dip one end of each piece into the chocolate and put it on some waxed paper or silicone mat to harden, or you can dip the whole thing into the chocolate and make it into a crunchy bar. Store your finished toffee in a covered container at room temperature. And I actually left several pieces in the container on my countertop for three or four days to see what would happen to it. And it actually stayed nice and dry and firm and didn't get sticky at all. So this is something you can make ahead of time and you can store for quite a while. Here is a side-by-side -side picture of my homemade crunchy bar on the left and the commercially available one on the right. The air bubbles and the one that I made were maybe a little bit bigger, but taste-wise, they're virtually identical. I hope you give this one a try. I love candy making, so you'll find many examples of the things I've tried in my candy playlist, including homemade lollipops, lots of different kinds of fudge, some candy popcorn, and even some lemon gumdrops. If you want to see this playlist, go ahead and click right on your screen or see the link in the about section below. Bye-bye.